Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today uh, we're going to be talking a little about wall corners. Um, I know I've been talking about this topic for quite some time now, but I think it's time that we actually made a video trying to explain what all these uh, corner configurations actually mean. And uh, you'll have to excuse me, I do have a brand new mic that I purchased, and so uh, hopefully I, we, you know, we can kind of iron out these... Uh, audio details a little bit as we go along here but yeah so we've got ourselves a new mic so I'm gonna go ahead and just click that wall uh, draw tool and of course as you can see you automatically bring up the menu and with the menu um, the start wall corners even though they're considered uh, shown here as outside corners what's gonna happen is is the wall plugin will automatically try to configure these corners as we draw the walls and actually, before we even jump into that, let's go back to the global settings here. So if you go to the wall tab, um, you're going to notice here under the walls tab that you've got auto corner config and it has a little explanation there. So basically what that means is when you have that turned on, that it will then try to have the plugin then enable the wall corners as you draw the walls. OK, so let's just start with a single wall. And I'm just going to draw it like this. And if I hit enter, of course, I get one wall. And I've turned off the uh, cladding, sheathing, and gypsum just so you can kind of see uh, the wall framing. I'm just going to hit the space bar, jump out of the tool. Okay, so if you don't go any further, um, what you're going to find is that this wall will have been created at what's called the end condition on each wall. So if you click the edit wall assembly tool and look at your corner configurations, you're going to see that each one of those is an end right end condition and so what that means essentially is that um, that's kind of the default end condition that you'll end up with if you're not configuring additional walls that connect to it and again you can always manually edit these walls at any time so I could change this to an outside corner on that start condition and I could change this to a inside outside corner and so on and so forth okay so let's take a look at what these actually all mean. Let's 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 just start over here real quick. Um, let's go ahead and just draw a few walls here, just to have something to play with. So we go ahead and we and you'll notice as we draw, we don't have to mess with any of the wall corner configurations. Just let the kind of let the thing do itself, its own little thing. Okay. So now we've snaked out and done like a little, I, mean, I don't know, a bunch of walls that are all connected. <clears throat> okay, so interestingly enough, as you draw these walls, you will notice that you have different situations, right? If you sit there and analyze these walls and tear them apart, you're going to notice right away that things are different for each wall panel and each corner. So, of course, this needs to happen. Otherwise, how else are you going to frame this wall up properly? So this corner configuration, uh, let's turn on the uh, sheathing here so we have that shown so we know which is the outside of the wall easily. Uh, let's go ahead and turn that on and I'm just going to actually change the uh, let's see here change the transparency of that just so we have that uh, we can see where what we've got going on okay okay so now we can see kind of what's going on okay so t if we look at this wall of course we know we now know that this is going to be the end wall condition right and the end wall means that basically that wall ends just kind of terminates now it's a little different one than what's called the terminal condition but we'll jump into that here in just a second okay so let's start with outside corners so you're always going to have when two walls come together an outside corner you're going to you're going to need two different end conditions you're going to need a regular outside corner and you're going to need what's called an inset outside corner so if we look at this wall panel right here and we click the edit wall assembly button we will notice that the start uh, is the end condition and the end of the wall which is this end is the inset outside corner okay and so what that basically means is it's an outside corner but it's inset from the corner in the stud width however much that is and as you can see where the sheathing lands it's it's inset in and that's to allow for the other wall to come in and frame into this corner okay so now let's take a look at this corner or this wall I mean and you'll notice that it's a regular outside corner and then of course we'll get over to the inside corner as well but basically this is a regular outside corner now if we made this to an inset outside corner 
obviously these two don't really match up, right? Because they're not, uh, they're not, uh, basically what you need is you need an inset outside corner always matches with an outside corner. That's kind of the rule of thumb here. So, right, so we want this to be an outside corner. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at an inside corner. Of course, we have two inside corners, but it doesn't matter. We can look at either one. And if we take a look at these, we can see that these two are actually identical. And these are what I call uh, inside corners. So if we look at the edit wall assembly tool again here, we can see that it, that's a regular inside corner. So actually the corner of the wall is right here at this outside framing point. And then the wall is extended another five and a half inches to frame into that uh, other wall. And then of course this wall, if we look at both the start and the end condition, it's an inset inside corner. So basically an inside corner and an inset inside corner always go together. This is an inset or inside corner. This is an inset inside corner, inset inside corner, inside corner. Okay. So that's basically covers outside corners, inset outside corners, inside corners and inset inside corners. And of course we've already covered the end corner or the, just the end condition. The only two ones we have left is the T corner and the terminal. Okay. So let's talk about T corners. <clears throat> right, so I am going to just take this guy and put him back, I guess. Okay, and then let's take this guy, and I don't remember how much I moved him, but I think it was something like that, yeah. Okay, so T-corners, right. Let's go ahead and create an interior wall. I'm going to hit update on that. Let's make it a 2 by 4 it doesn't really matter, but when you want to create a T-corner, you obviously want to bring your cursor right up to the framing of the wall. And you can, of course, frame into the outside, but, you know, typically what you're doing is you're framing um, something like this. Okay, and sometimes, you know, when you move a wall like this, that's teed into another wall, um, you know, you, you might, you can, you don't have to use the move tool per se. Uh, on something like this, you can just shift it over with the with the um, standard SketchUp tools. Let's drop that right there. Okay, so now you're noticing that you know this cutout piece and this um, the framing here for the T intersection is incorrect. It should obviously be over here. Well, simple enough. Just click Regen on that wall, and it'll restore or basically frame it in the right spot. So it, basically the algorithms uh, for T-corners are sensing that there's a wall that's teed in to this wall and it is adjusting itself accordingly. And the way it does that is the, the, basically the end of this wall needs to be touching the framing of this wall. Then the wall number four can sense that wall eight is teeing into it. Also, if you look at the actual end conditions, you'll notice this is a T-corner. Now, if we turn this from a T corner just to an end corner, right, what's going to happen is, is now when I regen this wall number four, it's going to look for any T corners that T into it. But if there are none, it's just going to ignore these other walls. Well, and, well, basically it ignores all the other walls and it just regens. So if we regen it, it should go away and it does. So again, the T corner is a special end condition, which will cause any walls that it's touching to recognize that they're, it's being they're being teed into okay so anyways it's, it's a little complicated i guess um but it's, i think it's fairly self-explanatory so i've set that to a t condition now now i need to do is regen this wall okay now sometimes there's conditions where you've got a wall for instance that's coming off a corner like sometimes you have these three wall junctions that are quite common uh, you got you know like an interior corner here with the exterior walls and then you've got like another wall an interior wall that's coming off like this okay so sometimes I've noticed that users are setting this to be a T corner okay that is incorrect if you do that you can cause well I've tried to make the <clears throat> the algorithms for these corner configurations configurations as robust as possible but sometimes that can cause you problems so what you want to do is you want to in this particular situation let's take a look at this 
Notice it's set to end. It defaulted to end. And actually, let's go ahead and turn this, the, um, the gypsum back on real quick. OK. So in this particular case, um, with an end condition, let's regen that wall. OK. You'll notice with an end condition that you will, let's regen that wall too. Okay, so on an exterior wall with an end condition, you do not get any uh, gypsum cladding on the ends of the wall. However, if you do an interior wall, you'll notice that with an end condition, you get you know the gypsum wrapping around the end of the wall just like this. And that's exactly what you want in most conditions where you have an end condition like that on an interior wall. Uh, you know, you're going to obviously, that the gypsum is going to cover that up, you're going to paint it, etc. Um, and of course, in a situation here, you don't want that. I mean, this gypsum right here, well, really you want that notched out, but you also don't need gypsum on the end of this wall. So that's what I've created the end, uh, the terminal condition for. So let's go ahead and change that now from end to terminal. So terminal essentially will take and remove the gypsum from the end of this interior wall, okay? And you know, you can do that as well with um, interior walls on this end as well. I mean, it doesn't, you know, you kind of have that flexibility if you need that condition for whatever reason. So really, I think that's the main difference between an end, condi end condition and a terminal condition, is the terminal condition on an interior wall simply removes all of the uh, gypsum, okay? And that, like I said, comes in handy when you've got like kind of this three wall configuration coming together in a junction. And again, um, this this end condition or start condition of this wall should not be set to T. This should be set to either terminal or end uh, for that to properly terminate with these other two uh, corners coming here. So sometimes there has been some confusion about that. All right, uh, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, again, we have um, an outside corner, an inset outside corner, and they always go together. And then you have an inset inside corner and an inset or inside corner, and they those two always go together. And then you have three others, and the T intersection corner where you have a wall T and another wall, and then of course the end condition or end, end wall condition and the uh, terminal condition. And that pretty much gives, uh, you know, enough flexibility, I think, to get most configurations of walls that you need to do. If there is any other ones that I need to add, um, you know, please give me some feedback on that or some ideas. But basically, after I had come up with the end condition, which is, you know, this situation, I had some people that wanted... Uh, the terminal condition so that that actually is the newest uh, end wall condition that, that, that we have all right um, I think that pretty much covers it as much as I wanted to talk about this subject if you have any specific questions um, you know please feel free to uh, uh, contact me email uh, voice whatever you want to do uh, the one thing that I will again point out and I think I've already mentioned this in another video is that if you are having problem with uh, problems with wall corners, I highly recommend going into the general settings, turn on the start end markers, and this is kind of like like training wheels. And if you do that, and then you, of course, if we draw these walls, we're going to regen them. You're going to notice that you get these little marks down here, and those show you exactly where the technical start and end of the wall is. And again, it is always on the outside framing of the wall. And even with an interior wall, you still have technically a start and end point. So there is, um, sorry, let me do that. I just want to regen that wall. So <clears throat> again, uh, this is the start and this is the end. And this is the exterior of the wall. This is the interior of the wall. The markers are always positioned on the exterior framing of the wall. And also, you'll notice to the label always is oriented this direction. So you, if you read it from this side, then you're looking at the exterior of the wall, whether that's an interior or exterior wall. So again, this is the exterior of the wall. And your start will be here to the left, and your end will be here to the right. And you can see that as we regen these walls, let's regen all these just real quick. Um, when the walls are properly positioned, 
like with corners and such, you're going to notice that the end and the start of all the walls that are properly positioned like that always coincide. So notice how the little targets line up. But in a situation like this or on your T uh, configuration, yeah, that's not the case. Yeah, let's regen that one. Okay. And that's fine. Um, that doesn't really matter. But if you are doing actual corner, uh, outside or inside, uh, inside corners, then you want those to coincide to be properly configured. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we will see you again next time.